this, what you just witnessed, cannot be done in Premiere Pro. You know it. Lumetri is good, but it's no way near when it comes to DaVinci Resolve. And show me one TV show, commercial, or a movie that ever used Premiere Pro as their finishing tool. That's just not how it works. On the other hand, let's just talk about TV shows. Game of Thrones, The Walking Dead, Westworld, American Horror Story, just to name a few, are graded in DaVinci Resolve. Let's talk about the movies. Avatar, Jurassic World, Star Wars, Joker, John Wick, some of the hottest stuff that you can think of. And the list just goes on for days. Everything is graded in DaVinci Resolve. And guys, that is important. Before you go, hey, I'm just an editor or I'm a videographer. I don't need to know color grading that deep. Rethink because grading is becoming one of those essential things that is part of that service package that you provide to your clients. Taking a regular indie film and making it look big budget, color grading can get you there most of the way. And that's why it's very important in 2020 to know this. And for those that are gonna jump on this DaVinci Resolve bandwagon right now are gonna have an advantage moving forward. And guys, you know, I'm not getting paid by DaVinci Resolve. This is not a sponsored video. This is just my two cents. Somebody who knows Premiere Pro from inside out, Final Cut 10, Avid Media Composer. I know all these tools. And last year, I made a switch to DaVinci Resolve. I never looked back. I think of DaVinci Resolve as if Final Cut 10 and Premiere Pro had a baby that they named DaVinci Resolve. This is how I look at it genuinely. So before we get into the how, let's talk about why DaVinci Resolve. And the why is just couldn't be simpler. Number one, it's free. Genuinely, the full application is free from start to finish, not a trial version, free application. I'm gonna show you how to download it, install it and get going with it. But you can buy the paid version that comes with tons of freaking goodies that is worth every single cent. And even the paid version is only $300. And that's not a subscription, yearly subscription. You, you buy it once and you have it for a lifetime. All the upgrades are free. Two, it's way less buggy. I'm talking way, way less buggy compared to Premiere Pro. I don't have to say it. Go on Instagram, TikTok, anywhere. And the world is filled with Premiere Pro crashes memes. So that is just a known thing. DaVinci Resolve, even a beta version of a new DaVinci Resolve is not as bad as say Premiere 15.11. Number three, DaVinci Resolve is a one-stop shop. And when I compare DaVinci Resolve, I'm comparing it to Premiere Pro, not the Adobe Suite. So Premiere Pro is a traditional editor, that's it, okay? If you need to do a sound design or sound mix, you gotta send something to an audition when you wanna do your graphics, you're sending it to After Effects or Photoshop. If you are grading something, before you had speed grade, now they added Lumetri, which is just a, it's somewhere in the middle. It's not really a full-fledged finishing tool, whereas DaVinci Resolve, you can bring in the project, you can edit in it, then you have a Fusion page, which is a full-blown compositor slash motion graphics tool. And then you move on to their color tool, which is what DaVinci Resolve is known for. And then you move on to Fairlight, which is the same as Audition or say Pro Tools, super, super advanced and very user-friendly. And then finally, they have a Deliver page. In Premiere Pro, you have to send things out to Encoder to really get that granular control to like where you're gonna distribute your final output to. Whereas in DaVinci Resolve, the delivery page takes care of all of that. So it genuinely is a one tool. You don't need dynamic linking. You don't need to pray that this time the dynamic linking will work and nothing is gonna go wrong. You're inside one tool and you're one tab away from accessing all those different tools. So are you sold yet? Are you pumped? Are you ready to jump into this? And for those that wanna level up their color grading game, check out the link in the description. One hour long free training where I will show you how to get the perfect skin tones out of your Sony S-Log 8-bit footage, how to get the clean white look. It's the go-to commercial look. How to get the creamy film look. How to fix the dreaded gamma shift and much, much more. Link is in the description. Guys, make sure to hit a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. I have a feeling that this video is gonna get us to 50,000 marks. So I wanna thank you in advance for 50,000 subscribers in one year. It is mind boggling. It was not possible without your guys' support and help and love. 
I have so much respect for each and every one of you. Make sure to follow me on Instagram. We're very close to hitting 100K, so help me make that happen. And on that note, let's roll the intro. So first of all, I wanna show you this, okay? Premiere Pro by itself costs you $239.88 annually, okay? So that's the price of just one tool. And DaVinci Resolve 16 Studio, which is their paid version, is $299 and you have lifetime access. It comes with unlimited upgrades and you don't have to pay any subscription annually. So just keep that in mind. But now let me show you how to download it for free. So we're just gonna type in DaVinci Resolve, download, and then click on the first link. And then once you're in here, they made it really simple. Just click on download and it summarizes the differences between the two. And I can tell you the studio version has better performance. It lets you do HDR grading. It has film grain, noise reduction, and tons of other resolve effects and fair light effects that you just can't overlook. So I highly recommend the studio version. That said, the regular version is more than capable to get you from A to B, okay? So let's just go ahead and click on Mac OS because that's what I have. And you gotta fill out this information. That's something you cannot skip. And then once you're done filling that out, just hit register and download. And then at the bottom, you're gonna see it's it will start downloading. So I'm gonna speed this up. All right, so now that we have this downloaded, I'm gonna double click on it. And now it's ready to be installed. Double click on it again. All right, everything looks good. 16.2 is what you need because I'm gonna show you a couple of things in here that are exclusive to 16.2. All right, we're all set and ready to go. I'm just gonna keep it for now. Let's launch it for the first time. All right, there you go. Okay, so this is what you're gonna see when you first launch DaVinci Resolve. And the thing that you need to know is it works a little bit differently than Premiere Pro. In Premiere Pro, when you start a new project, you pick a location where you wanna save that project. Whereas here, all your projects stay in what they call a database. And that's similar to how Avid Media Composer works, where this project file or the database is just kind of put away, tucked away so you don't mess with it, you don't move things by mistake or anything like that. And I think it's a way more robust system than what you have with Premiere Pro or Final Cut 10. So here, this is where my default database is, I will highly recommend changing that, not leaving it to local database. So you can easily do that by new database, calling it the Cosman DB, I'll call it that. Make sure that you're under create and not connect. And then you're gonna click on this and then pick your RAID where you usually work off of or your scratch disk. And then what you need to do is create a new folder and then calling it, you know, I'm, I can call it the same thing or you can call it DaVinci Resolve database, something like that and then just hit open. And now it's gonna save our database there and it's gonna create a new database in a second, okay? And this is what I wanna use because this is set to my local drive and it can fill up really fast. But now here I can just feel free to work because I have tons of space here. Now, I'm not gonna be taking you through project settings or preferences in this one, but if you are interested in an in-depth tour, then watch this video up here. In this one, my goal is simple. I wanna give you all the things necessary to make the switch as soon as possible. And then once you get comfortable in DaVinci Resolve, all the little settings here and there, you're gonna start figuring it out on your own. Let's just jump right in. So once we're here, we can just double click on this and open up a project. And this is what it looks like when you first open up DaVinci Resolve and you're inside a project, okay? And what I need you to do, I'm gonna make this so everything is on one screen. It's very similar to Premiere Pro. On the top left-hand side, you have your media storage or your browser. If we look at Premiere Pro, we got our media browser and all our drives are here. And uh, it's a very similar thing. And then when you bring in your clips, they show up down here. So in DaVinci Resolve, you know, this is where our clips are. And let's just go ahead and grab a couple of these clips and bring them in. And then this is where we're gonna be dragging them down. 
in here. And once you do that, it will ask you, do you want to change the project settings? And this is a little different than Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro doesn't let you do that unless you grab a clip and drop it into a timeline. That's when it asks you for that information. So here, very similar still, and I'm just going to say change. So now it's going to go ahead and change my project settings to what it's supposed to be. Okay. So now that that's good to go, what I want to do is I want to grab, let's just say these clips and I want to right click here and just call it a cam. And then I want to move these to my a cam. Okay. And then I just want to click here and call this B cam and then grab the rest and just drop it into B cam. Now in Premiere Pro, the cool thing is that everything is modular. So you can grab this and create a new pain and you know go back here and you can just really customize it the way you like it here it might seem too restricted but it's not it's very similar to what you can do there but in a much more controlled environment in a good way so what i can do here is i can click on this guy and say hey give me two panes so now i can show my b cam here and a cam here see and just like in premiere pro we can do a list view or a grid view it's very similar here. We can do a grid view or a list view. And it even has a similar metadata right here available, okay? And goes for both of them right here. So as I said, in many ways, they're very, very similar. Cool thing here is that I can click on the clip and get my metadata information right here. And then anytime you see this little guy and you will see it on the top left and top right, this is great for getting more real estate down here. So just look what happens. Okay. When I click on this guy, it opens up the bottom. See what I mean? Like it's not the same as how in Premiere Pro you can move things around, but it's even better because there you have to create your own system. Here you get similar customization options with better direction. Now I can click on my clip right here and just view it or I can just hover over and just look how responsive it is. Okay, that's something that you cannot ignore compared to Premiere Pro. These are all 4K ProRes clips shot on Ari Raw LF. This is for the media page. Now, other way to bring in our media would be the traditional way, which is right click and import media. And then you can just bring in these clips. But I think this is way faster. And that's the method that I prefer. Moving on to the edit page. In the edit page, you got your timeline, your canvas, and your record window right here, and then all your clips on this side, okay? If I need more space on my timeline, which I do, I can click on this and open it up, and I can click right here and open it up even more. Then I can grab it right here and bring it down, okay? To give myself more space. What I can do is grab all these clips and just drag and drop them down here, boom. Now they're in here. Obviously, there's no audio with these, so didn't come with it. Now, the cool thing is that any clip that you use is going to have these lines underneath that will tell you that it's being used. OK, in your timeline, that's a really cool option. In the B cam, if I were to open this up and do an in and an out. And then I can just drag it and it gives me all these options. Now, these options are very similar to Premiere Pro. Once again, I can say append at end. So even though my playhead is sitting at the beginning, if I do append at end, it will add this clip to the end. Now, let's jump over to Premiere Pro. Let's just try one. So I'm just going to go right here. I'm going to grab a clip and bring it up and see, I get all these options. As a matter of fact, I don't get the append option, which was really cool in DaVinci Resolve, which Premiere Pro doesn't have. So I have to move my playhead here in order to add a clip, which is a really cool feature here that you don't have to worry about that. Your toolbar in Premiere Pro sits right here. In DaVinci Resolve, it sits right here. It's very, very similar tools. Your blade tool, your slip and slide tools, your insert tool, your overwrite tool, all the similar tools sit right here that you have here. OK, now let's go bring in a soundtrack. So I'm just going to go right here in my music and I'm just going to pick something. So I'm going to pick this soundtrack and let's just create a new folder called music and we will drag it into that. And now that we have it here, let's go to our edit page. Our track is up here we can just drag and drop. Okay. And now I want to show you one more thing. So if 
it's bugging you that you have to learn new keyboard shortcuts and you're just used to everything in Premiere Pro, it's pretty simple. You go right here under DaVinci Resolve, keyboard customization, and in here you can click this guy and it gives you different presets, okay? So it will be set to DaVinci Resolve, but then you have Final Cut 10, Avid Media Composer, Premiere Pro, now, I don't use Premiere Pro ones. Every tool that I use, I try to learn their keyboard shortcuts. That's just me. But if you wanna use this as a start off point so then you're not like driven crazy and then eventually just build on that, then you can do that as well and just hit save and then go from there. But for me, I'm gonna leave it to the one that I set up for myself and I'll just keep going. So I'll just hit cancel here, discard. I don't wanna change that. Now that we have music in here. Let me just show you a couple of things, okay? So if you select the trim mode up here, now I can slide my music over, right? So I want it to start right here. So another really handy key is this guy right here. So this will do a pre-roll of the clip that's selected two seconds before and after. So in this case, it will play the whole thing. But all I wanna do is just play and see if the beginning sounds cool. So it sounds good. Now I'm gonna go back, click on this guy, and then watch this. This is super cool, okay? You can just grab this and move it over. Unlike Premiere Pro, where if I wanna do this, let's just do the same thing here. I'm gonna bring in the clip, and when I lay it in here, so I'm gonna trim the music down to our last clip, and then I'm gonna go to the beginning of my edit and look at, there is nothing to smooth out that transition. I have to click right here and then click right here and then add that. That's one way to do it. Or I'm going to have to click right here and hit Command Shift D and then move this over. Whereas here, I can just do this. But another cool thing is that this guy that you see, watch what it lets me do. I mean, this is crazy. This is all happening right here. And then I can just play it through and see how good it is. Now your meters are right here, but if that's too small, you can click on the mixer button right here and now it gives you your meters, just like you would have it in Premiere Pro. Another thing that I wanna show you is in Premiere Pro, you can have multiple timelines, right? So if I take these three clips and just drag and drop it, it will give me another timeline and I can switch between these two timelines. Whereas here, I don't see that option. I don't have more timelines, even if I try to create it. So, or we go here, we select all these clips and we click right here, we create a timeline, timeline two, where is my timeline one? So that's pretty easy. You just click on this guy and right here. You pop that open, now it's showing you timeline two. You can click here, open timeline one, and you can even rearrange them, and now you got both of your timelines right here, okay? Another super handy thing in DaVinci Resolve that we have here by default, whereas in Premiere Pro you can get it, but you have to create smart folders. You have no way of knowing where the timeline is. You have to go in the right folder to find it, okay? Whereas in DaVinci Resolve, you have smart bins. So regardless of where I am and I'm looking for my timelines, in the bin structure, I can just click on timelines and it'll pull up all my timelines. Sometimes your projects will get super elaborate and you'll have like 15 timelines because you're delivering in so many different formats, Facebook, Instagram, web, all sorts of different deliverables. You'll have so many timelines. So when you have this button right here, it can be a freaking lifesaver. A couple of more customization options that I wanna take you through in your timeline view right here is I usually turn all these three guys on and then that just gives me a much better view of my timeline. And here is where you can increase the size of it. So I can just leave it usually around here somewhere and then for the video clips somewhere around here. And then this is where you can control how much you wanna zoom in on the timeline. Usually I just have keyboard shortcuts for that so I can really get in there. And guys, I mean, come on, look at the playhead, how responsive it is and how fast everything moves. That right there, let's try it here and see if it does the same thing.
Now, I have a $20,000 machine, so that might have something to do with it. It's doing pretty good, but still not as good as how it is here. Like, this response is just absolutely bananas, okay? This is crazy in full res. Now, adding keyframes is way easier and more user-friendly in DaVinci Resolve compared to Premiere Pro. So, in Premiere Pro, if you want to do a speed ramp on this clip, you have to click right here, right click, go under here, speed ramp, and then you have to make this bigger so you can really see what's happening. And let's say this is where I wanna add a speed ramp so I can raise it up to this point and let's see. That's not enough, even more. Make it bigger. That's too much. Let's bring it down somewhere around here. That's better. And now, see what I mean? So that's how you do it in Premiere Pro. Whereas here in DaVinci Resolve, you just grab a clip, you hit Shift C, and it pops this open. And then you click right here and we do retime speed. Okay. And now I can make it a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. And right here, I can just hit option, click, and then raise this puppy up. And I can control how much I want the speed to go up. I think I want to take it close to 22, 23-ish, 100. And let's see. This is nice. And now if I click right here, look, I can just click on this guy and it gives me a nice curve. Boom, done. And now I can hit shift C and we're done. And it just keeps it nice and tidy. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do a speed ramp is really nice where I can just grab this, hit command R, click right here and just do a add speed point. And then I can click right here and say, hey, make it 800%. See, so it does a really nice job. Or I can just grab it from here and then make it as big or as small as I want it. Now, let me take you through the inspector window right here, which is very similar to the effects control in Premiere Pro. So we have our motion control, opacity, and time remapping here. And in here, we have our opacity and transform control, positioning and all that. And then we have tons of other tools like cropping, dynamic zoom, stabilization, lens correction, retiming, scaling. So a bunch of more options like stabilization is built in here, whereas over there you have to drop in an effect. So if I can go to this clip and I can grab it and I can zoom in, make it bigger, repo it and all that good stuff or I can crop it, stabilize it, all that. But the cool thing here is that if you click on this guy right here, now you can move it around within your record window. So let's say you make it bigger, but you wanna just reframe it here instead of like using these controls, you can do that by activating that and then it will be highlighted. So you know that you have this mode selected, but when you click on it, it goes away. I feel like it's way more intuitive, like how they have it here compared to the effects control, which usually is not even available. You have to double click and then click right here and then access it. Whereas here, you just always have it there and you can make it smaller or you can make it bigger, whatever you're working with. Another thing that I wanna show you here, if you are not using this window and you're kind of hurting on the real estate on your screen, you can click on this guy and just have the record screen right here, okay? And that's very helpful if you're on a laptop or something like that. You can do the same thing here, okay? I can click on effects library, that goes away. I can click on media pool and really get some serious real estate. I can even click on inspector and make that go away and now I can just uninterruptedly work. So those are some really cool little handy tips 
Now let's look at some of the effects that come with DaVinci Resolve. And obviously this is the free version, but let me take you through and how everything is organized. Let's just trim some of these so we can add crossfades and I'll just do this and uh, just to make a point and then let's go grab a crossfade, drop it in. Works like how crossfades usually work and I'll open the inspector window and show you this. So if I were to click right here, it will give me transition settings. Okay, so now I can just click right here, which is really, really cool. So I can either do by seconds or frames right here and then see how it works. And then I can go back and increase it to six. And again, remember when the clip or the transition is selected, I can hit backslash and then it'll give me a little preview. And it'll stop after the pre post roll. So we got a bunch of different transitions here. You can just play around with these, go through and, you know, use the ones that you like. I usually avoid transitions. I don't really use them. I'm not a big fan, so it doesn't really matter to me but uh, they're right here for you and you can apply audio transitions too. You got the crossfades and everything, but like I said, I usually just stick with a really cool feature right here where I can just pull this from the side and then even control the easy ease on it right here. Then you have your title tool available right here, which in Premiere Pro, you either have to click this guy and then click right here and start typing and then uh, you have the graphic and then you can go in and make changes to it, make it bigger, whatever you want to do with it. So this is how it works in Premiere Pro for text. Whereas in DaVinci Resolve, you go under the titles category in your effects library and I can just grab my text plus. I want to show you this one because this is kind of cool and I can twirl that down so I have more controls here. And then what I can do is, you know, that could be the beginning of our video. So I'm going to move all these clips over and then in here we can just say that golf life. And then let's go ahead and make it smaller. So I'm just going to grab it here and scroll it back. And that's a pretty good text. But what I want to do is this. Okay, if I take the right on and go all the way back and add this little diamond, which is a keyframe, I can come to the last frame here. And then or actually, you know what, midway through and extend it. So basically, it's gonna write as it goes. So that's kind of cool. And then I can even do, see again, like it's, it disappears, but when you come close to the clip, like you get this and now I can do a nice fade out to watch. Look how nice it is. And I can do the same thing with the clip too then. So that's looking pretty good. Let's move these over. So again, all the general tools right here, okay, if you click on your trim tool, it gives you, it's a dynamic tool, so it gives you different ones, slip and slide. So I can just go to the bottom, I get different option, top, I get different. So bottom, I can move it around within clips, park it somewhere around here. If I grab it from the top, I can move it within the clip, which I can't because it doesn't have any give, like I have to make the clip smaller. So let's do this and then even grab it from here and let's do that. And now if I grab it from the middle, I can move it around and it even gives you like a little wireframe to tell you how much room you have on each side, which is super, super cool. And then I can hit A and go back to it. If you want to add a cut, you can just click on this and then add a cut or you can just hit B, add a cut or you can do Command B. But if you don't select a clip, it's going to cut through everything. If you select a clip and then hit Command B, it's only going to add a cut between those clips. So now that we have our basics down, we can move on to the color page and I can show you some really cool techniques there. OK, so let's just create really fast, a really fun look. And uh, I'm just going to go in my RGB mixer and I'm going to turn on monochrome to just create a cool look and then 
go right here, bring up the contrast, and pull my highlights down a little bit and give it even more contrast, and then take my gamma up so we can see some more detail. Keep pulling the gamma up. Maybe bring the contrast down a little bit. Something like that. And I'm going to create another window. And this one, I'm just going to do something funky. I'm going to do this. Park it somewhere around here. And then just really create a crazy vignette. I'm going to go here. Grab it from the middle. Just kind of pull everything down around it, okay? Doesn't look like much, but from a clip to clip, it's going to make a difference. Now, what we can do is click on Clips, so we can see all our clips here. And another really cool thing that you can do is you can click on this and middle click on this clip to copy its attributes. Boom, done. Another way to do it, if I go here, I can right click and say apply grade. So that's another way to do it. So now we're applying that grade to our footage. And if I go from here, I can turn on, turn off loop. So then it goes from this clip to the next clip. And then I can click here, do the same thing, right click, apply grade, and then it'll apply it to that. Or I can do one better. I can grab all of these and then middle click and I'll apply it to everything. Okay. Now we can go in and make some adjustments like this one. Can use some more gamma and even gain just to bring everything up. Because if I go from there to there, now it's looking better. I can even copy paste this one here. And then go in here and bring the gain down just a tad. But this is looking better. Like just look at this. Like we were able to create a really cool stylized look really fast. Now I can show you. We can go under our fair light. Fair light is exactly like if you're in Audition or if you are in Pro Tools. Like all the features that it gives you. And look at it. The tracks can go on for eternity. And then your effects library is right here. So if you want to apply clip based effects, you can apply them here, but usually I don't. I use track based effects. Once again, the benefit of being in one place is that you save so much time. You're not exporting everything and then sending it out and then bringing it into a different software just to find out that some files didn't come through or something is missing or the timing is off and time code slippage and all those things that can happen. None of that you have to worry about when you're inside Resolve because everything is in one place. So here I'm looking at my video. I'm playing with my music. If I want to add an effect, I can come in here, go into Reverb, select this guy, and then just like Audition or Pro Tools, I have some presets to start working off of or I can create my own if I want to play with it. So all that is right here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that, but that's just to give you an option that all these tools are available right within DaVinci Resolve. And then finally, let me take you through the deliver page. And here, just like Encoder or Apple's compressor, you have tons of options. You can deliver directly to Vimeo or YouTube, or you can deliver in ProRes 422HQ, or you can, you know, customize it. I'm going to show you the best settings for H.264, 1080p, if you're uploading to web, okay? I would click right here and then click on this guy to twirl it down so we can see all the options right here. So it's telling you that, hey, it's 24 frames, 1080p. Right now, set to automatic. Don't do that. I would click on restrict and I'll click right here and set this to 40,000. When you see my videos on how clean they look and they have no artifacts, I am setting this to that. But obviously, my output is 4K, so I'm setting this to 80,000 for 4K. Then you want to click on advanced settings and here is where the magic happens. And this is why you need a 16.2 version. Okay. And this will blow your mind. People who are having gamma shift issues, uh, especially on Mac, when they export from Resolve and it looks darker and they can't figure out what's going on when they pop it open in QuickTime, under the gamma tag, click 
drag down and just click on Rec 709, now export and thank me later, your biggest problem of your life is solved. Another thing is force sizing to highest quality, force D-bear to highest quality. These are very important to check on because if on the back end, if your system was chugging along and in here you turned on render cache or something like that, or if you were using optimized media, then you will deliver in those reduced res format, but by setting to force sizing and force debear, you override that. So that's a really good option where you don't have to go back and fiddle with those settings. You can just leave them as is. Once again, another example of how robust this tool is. And at this point, we can just name it. Let's just call it golf. And I can click on browse. I can choose my location wherever I wanna deliver this. So I will just throw it on this drive right here. Once you're ready, you can hit render to queue and then just hit start render. Boom, done in two seconds. And now I can right click here, reveal in finder and play my clip. Done, okay? So that is resolve in a nutshell and especially at this point you guys should be more than equipped to make the switch from premiere pro to davinci resolve now one more thing that i do want to mention is that those of you that are still bound to premiere pro because you have so many templates and cool transitions and all that stuff and you don't know how to get that in davinci resolve here are a couple of sites that i'm going to link in the description and I'm not paid by these guys, okay? So 640 puts out really good transition pack and it's basically all the transitions you need. Come on, if you wanna use more than 40 transitions or if you need more choices, then you need to work on your editing, okay? So there's gonna be like three, four kinds of different transitions that you're gonna be using, punching in, like zooming in like that, or they they got you covered, like a swish pan. So all those basic ones are here. You can look into this or you can go and check out this motion array site and it is filled with templates, text, and just every single thing that you can think of. Lower thirds, lens flares. I mean, the list just goes on the kind of stuff that they have. So I'm gonna have both of these links in the description. And uh, if this is the only thing that's keeping you, now you can have all that cool stuff for DaVinci Resolve. Check out these two sites, link is gonna be in the description. Hope you guys had a blast. I mean, I just wanted to give you the most practical knowledge to just transition from Premiere Pro to Resolve right now after this tutorial, or obviously it's on YouTube, so you can go back and watch it again if you like. But guys, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, share this with friends, and make sure to check out the link in the description for one hour long free training, and I will see you in the next video.